Hey, hey, what's up, my friend? Welcome back to episode 7 of Ask Rainer. And in this week's question, I have a question from Nawa who asked me, Hey, Rainer, how do you actually skill in your trades? Right, so skilling in your trades is basically an advanced technique because it can help you increase your profit potential. But at the same time, if you don't do it correctly, you can lose more than your intended risk. So in today's episode, right, I'll explain to you, right, what are the three mistakes to avoid when scaling in your trades, how to scale in your trades correctly, and when is the best time to scale in your trades. So all this and more in today's episode. I'll see you there. So, how to scale in your winners, right? So just a quick definition of what scaling in means, right? It simply means that you are looking to add on additional position size as the market moves in your favor, right? So some traders call this scaling in, some call this averaging in. Uh, basically, it means the same thing, all right? Uh, so before I talk about, you know, how to scale in your winners, right? I want to, you know, share with you, right, the mistakes that traders make when they are scaling in their trades, right? I, I would say if you can avoid these mistakes, right, you are pretty much, you know, on the safe side when you're scaling in your trades. Number one, scaling in too fast, right? What do I mean by this is that, you know, you don't want to scale in your trade, right? Just because the market has, you know, moved a little in your favor, all right? So why is that so? Because if you think about this, if you scale in your trades too early, all right, let's say you are risking 500 pips, right? And the market has moved, say, 100 pips in your favor. Okay? So if you were to scale in just because the market has moved 100 pips in your favor, right? What if the market retraces against you and it hits your initial stop loss, right? Now you lose money on the first position and your second position, which is the, which is the scale in trade, right? And you end up, you know, say, you know, losing more than your intended risk, right? So you don't want to be scaling in your trades too fast. Number two, you don't want to scale in too large as well. Why is that, right? Let's say you long, say, one standard lot of euro dollar, right? Let's say 1.3, right? And let's say your subsequent scaling trades, you decided to go, you know, with two lots of euro dollar, right? This, you want to be careful, right? I, I strongly uh, advise against it. The reason being is because your average price now is going to be much higher, right? This means that your position size will be top heavy because, you know, your latest trade that you entered, has a larger position size than your initial trade. So what this means is that if the market does pull back, right, you're going to lose money or you're going to lose more money on your latest position size, right? And on the whole, it can actually, you know, erode your profits very quickly because, you know, your latest position size is too large. This is what I mean by top heavy, okay? So beware of scaling in too large because it is, it is going to increase your average price Right, and any slight pullback that comes, right, will erode your potential profits. And thirdly, right, you don't want to scale in your trade when there is no valid trading setup, right? So, you know, I, I think sometimes you come across, you know, stuff like, you know, if the market moves 100 pips, you scale in one time, it goes in 200 pips in your favor, you scale in again, it goes in 300, 400, 500 pips, you scale in your trades every, you know, 100 pips. The problem with this is that, you know, it works, right, if the market goes parabolic, but that is usually more of, the rare exception. In normal times, the market tends to mean revert, right? So the problem with this approach is that if you keep scaling in your trades at every, you know, predetermined uh, uh, distance that a market move, right? When the pullback does come, right? It's going to wipe out your profits again, right? And, and you can see that, you know, there will be a huge volatility in your equity curve, okay? So these are the three mistakes, right? That you don't want to do when you are scaling in your trades. Don't scale in your trades too fast. Don't scale in your trade too large on the, you know, on the later position size. And, you know, don't scale in your trades when there is no valid setup. Okay? So now, the question is, how do you actually scale in your trades then the correct way? Right? So here are some of the guidelines that I want to share with you. Number one, you need open profits, right? To Before you consider scale, scaling in your trades. Why is that? Because your open profits will act as a cushion, a buffer, right? Should the market retrace. Okay? So typically for me, I typically we we'll look for at least 3R, all right? 3R in open profits before I consider scaling in my trades. Because the key thing is that when I 
put on a trade, right? See, let's say my initial risk is say $1,000, right? The maximum loss I want to take on that trade, right? Accounting for scale in and everything is $1,000 maximum, right? So this is usually, let's say 1% of my account. I don't want to lose anything more than that, right? And to do so with scaling in is that you need open profits to serve as a buffer, as a cushion, right? Should the market retrace? Because, you know, more often than not, a market tends to pull back to retrace, right? So for me personally, at least three are in open profits before I consider scaling in my trade. Number two, I would reduce size on my subsequent scale in. Okay, so let's say, you know, uh, uh, the first position size I have is say one lot right, one lot, right, if I were to scale in my trade, right, I would reduce size on it, or, or rather, let's, let's put it another way around, we don't use the lot equation, let's say my initial risk is $1,000, right, my subsequent trades, when I scale in, right, I would try not to risk anything more than $300 on the subsequent trade, so this means is if that my second position that I scale in, right, and I get stopped out, right, the maximum loss on this second position is $300, all right, and it is unlikely that it will cause me to lose more than my initial risk because if you recall, I look for a minimum of 3R in open profits. This is equivalent to $3,000, right? So if I were to sustain a loss, right, of, of the second position size, this is only a maximum loss of $300. So this has enough buffer to cover my subsequent scale in trade, right? And this is important, right? You don't want to be as I've mentioned earlier, right, scaling in too aggressively with too large size, that even your cushion, your buffer that you had earlier is insufficient to cover for it. And thirdly, lastly, is that you need a valid trading setup, right? So as I've said earlier, right, it does not really make sense to me to be scaling in your trades as the market moves 100 pips in your favor, then another 100 pips, you scale in again, another 100 pips, you scale in again, right? Because if you were to do that, if the market goes this way, right, as it goes higher and higher, you're scaling in here, 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 here. But what happens, you know, is that the trend seldom goes, you know, parabolic one directional. It tends to come back lower, pop, higher, retrace, and higher. And if you do this, right, this retracement over here is going to kill a lot of your subsequent scaling position. Okay, so you want to have a valid trading setup, right? So the first reason is because if the retracement comes, a lot of your open profits will be wiped out. The second thing is you, if you were to scale in this manner, you may have difficulty setting a proper stop loss, right? So if you ask me, right, if you want to scale in your trades, right, it would make sense if it comes with a valid pullback where you can go long, let's say, you know, somewhere near, if the market turns up higher, you can go long here and just, you know, set your stops based on this new swing low where you can actually, you know, reference from and set, you know, a proper stop loss, okay? So this is how I would suggest, right, you know, you would go about scaling in your trades. So I'm just going to share with you a quick example. I purposely cherry pick this, this example, right, to show you how scaling in could work, you know, in the in the markets. So this is the chart of crude oil, the daily time frame sometime in 2014, when you know the, the crude oil collapse, right? So these are, you know, just to share with you how a trader could, you know, potentially scale in their trade, right? This is a trade actually I, I took, right, a couple of years back, resulted in some really crazy risk to reward. But like, like I've said, right, I mean, a, a very favorable risk to reward, right, in terms of R. But as I've said, right, this is usually more of a rare case where the market really goes crazy. In normal times, right, you don't really get such, you know, long-lasting trend, right? So, you know, when you scale in, you really want to be careful. But, you know, if you really do get it right, right, in terms of R, you can really achieve some crazy R return. So let's say, for example, you you are a trend trader, you trade pullbacks, flag pattern, you know, et cetera. And this one is, let's say, this is your first setup, right? You shot the break of this bearish flag. All right, let's say your stops is, you know, 180 are above this high. Let's say somewhere here. Initial stop loss, entry. So the market, as it goes in your favor, right, let's say around here, there's another potential, you know, setup to go short. Let's say at this point in time, you have at least 3R in open profits. You can consider going short, right? So there are a few ways to actually, you know, to trade this, right? You can either trade the breakdown of this over here, or you look to short the retracement back towards this uh, 20 period moving average, right? So this is a couple of considerations that you can think of, right? Either way, you can have a valid stop loss because you can reference from this structure high to set your stop loss, right? So similar for this, you can look to scale in here, right? can reference your stop from this recent swing high, right? And then as the market goes in your favor, right? So this is what I mean by, you know, scaling in your trades, right? You want to have a valid trading setup, right? So these are all pretty much valid trading setup. They're all looking like, you know, continuation patterns in this existing downtrend, okay? 
So just to, you know, to, to share with you, you know, the right way to go about doing this. So if you were to, you know, let's say, get rid of all these lines, right? Let's say if you were to, let's say this trade, you risk $1,000, Right. Let's say the next scaling trade you get over here, you don't want to be risking a thousand dollars. So let's say at here, let's say at this point in time you have you know three k in open profits. You consider scaling in your trades. You want to be risking right lesser than your initial position size. So let's say this one you risk three hundred dollars. Okay. Then the market goes in your favor. Right down here you can risk another three hundred dollars on this one, and another three hundred dollars on this one. Right. Of course you're you're gonna make a lot more if you risk a thousand dollar here, here, and here. But at the same time, if the pullback does come, you're going to feel really the pinch, right, of your, your equity swing, right? So this is why I suggest, right, strongly to reduce your position size, right? So that's one, right? Uh, you have your, you reduce your size. Number two, you actually, you know, reduce, uh, sorry, you have some open profits as a buffer, right? So even if the market retraces, you won't lose more than your initial risk. And the third thing is you have a valid setup, right, whereby you're just trading, you know, flag pattern, right? So all this... These are not, you know, cast in stone, right? I just want to share with you the core concept, you know, when you're scaling in. Of course, you can look for other setup, like maybe, you know, shorting resistance. Uh, you want to reduce size, maybe you don't want to be risking, you know, $300. You want to be risking $250, $200. It's up to you. Open profits, maybe you say that, you know, I don't need a 3R in open profits. I can be fine with 2R. That is, again, up to you. So trading is not really anything that is cast in stone, right? These are basically the core concept that I want to, you know, to, to share with you, Okay. So let's do a quick recap, right, into, you know, how to scale in your winners, right? Number one, right, have open profits before scaling in, right? Uh, I've discussed that quite extensively because, you know, you don't want to lose anything more than your initial risk. Number two, reduce size when you are scaling in, right? Because if you don't reduce size, right, any pullback that comes, right, will, you know, cause you to see a very sudden swing down in your equity curve, right? So for me, I always reduce size when I scale in. And last but not least, wait for a valid trading setup. So this is where you can actually, you know, when you have a valid trading setup, you can have a proper stop placement, right? So you're not, you know, anyhow putting your stops in the market, all right? So these are basically, right, the core things that you want to consider when you are scaling in your trades, right? Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you do, hit the like button and the subscribe button below, right? So I know that, you know, you're enjoying this video. And if any comments, feedback, feel free to let me know and I'll talk to you soon.